This is Wang Jia Huang from Year Right Two class at Tian Cao College. In this video, I'm going to talk about denying the consequent. So first, you may want to ask, what is denying the consequent? According to the Oxford reference, in conditional reasoning, arguing vastly from a hypothetical proposition of the form, if P, then Q that, because Q is false, therefore P is false. In a simple way to understand that it is, if A is true, then B is true. B is not true, therefore A is not true. So in this case, we are dealing here with a conditional reasoning, which is if A is true, then B is true. And A is the antecedent, and B is the consequent. Um, looking at the um, second sentence, B is not true, so we are denying the B. So uh, it is e equals to we are denying the consequent, and therefore A is not true. Here is an example. If it is a corgi, then it is a dog. It is not a dog, therefore it cannot be a corgi. Moreover, I think the most important thing about um, the denying the consequence is that this is a valid argument. To understand what is a valid argument, um, let me tell you um, what is an invalid argument first. So invalid argument refers to the denying the antecedent, which is if A is true, then B is true. A is not true, therefore B is not true. In this, in this case, we are denying the um, antecedent first, which is um, A is not true, and this is the invalid argument. Here are some practice. If you pass the test, then you will get an A for the course. You didn't get an A for this course, therefore in, you didn't pass the test. So in um, this case, in this argument, we are denying the consequence. It's very obvious. And uh, to understand this argument is saying that if you pass the test, you get an A. But if you haven't got an A, so you can't have passed the test.